from Shea Stadium in New York. Tonight, the Mets take on the Montreal Expos. Mets Baseball 95 is brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true, this Bud's for you. By American Express. By your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. By the new Sunoco MasterCard that can earn you free Sunoco gasoline. And by Bob's Stores for people who wear clothes. Pitching for the Expos this evening, a good, tough left-hander, Jeff Facero, a 3-0 record, a 3.71 earned run average. And for the Mets, he's trying to get on track. Jason Hockamy, he's 0-2 with a soaring ERA. Welcome to New York Mets baseball. Tonight, the Mets against the Montreal Expos in the first of a four-game series. I'm Ralph Kiner along with Tim McCarver, and we're all set to go. A special night tonight, and a player playing third base uh, might win a job in the major leagues. It's cut down time in about three more days, and he's, uh, he's in there tonight. Well, because of the strike situation, the Mets have to go from 28 to 25 players. Currently, they have 27 on the roster, and will Edgardo Antonio Alfonso go down? down or will he stay in the big leagues it's my guess he's going to stay up here Ralph and Dallas Green has said that if he does stay up here he will probably be the regular third baseman and that uh, entertains all sorts of notions will Bobby Bonilla go to first base and if he does what do you do with Rico Bronia or will Bobby Bonilla go to left field and then what do you do with David Segui it's a it's a pleasant problem to have because he's impressed so many guys up here and speaking of Rico Bronia Tim will talk to him in just a moment after this message from South 11. Welcome back to Shea Stadium as we await the start of the Expos, their first visit to Shea this year, and the Mets. And our uh, star before the game uh, is Rico Bronia. Rico, that was a Super Bowl game last night, defensively and offensively. Oh, well, thank you, Tim. It was, uh, it was definitely a good win for us last night um, to take two from Atlanta. Uh, this is a big week for us in our division, and to take two from Atlanta was good. Speaking of two, that's exactly how many uh, games your uh, high school team won <laughs> with you as the quarterback coach this past winter up in Watertown, Connecticut. Yeah, uh, <laughs> ironically it was. <laughs> well, what kind of experience was that? I mean, you're the quarterback coach in, uh, in high school. You were a terrific high school quarterback yourself with... Uh, a chance of going to Clemson uh, as their quarterback and, and also the head basketball coach this winter. You were busy, huh? Yeah, I tried to keep busy. I, I really enjoy coaching. Um, my dad's always been a coach, and I've uh, spent a lot of time with his teams, and I've always practiced drawing up the X's and the O's, and now I get a chance to do it for real for the first time the past couple of years. I really enjoy it. Rico, you were the oldest boy in your family. You have three younger sisters, and I would imagine your father, uh, being a coach in high school, had to help you immensely. Yeah, um, my dad has uh, has really helped me a lot. He's provided for me uh, the facilities with his coaching to, uh, to practice uh, all my sports growing up, uh, the basketball and the baseball and the football. And just being around him, he's always talking sports back home because he is a coach, so I got a chance to learn from him. And uh, we continue to do the same things uh, even today. We, we talk about a lot of things in baseball and uh, as well as other sports. Well, he has taught you well, my friend. Continued good luck, and we'll be right back for the start of today's game right after this from Bell Atlantic. First of a four-game series with the Montreal Expos. The Expos played the Mets in Montreal in a three-game series, winning two out of three. And a happy birthday to Felipe Alou, who is 60 years old today. Felipe, a great baseball player in his major league career and an outstanding manager and 60 years old today. Our birthdays uh, throughout the major leagues. Yogi Berra is 70 years old today. And Felipe acknowledging, Felipe, uh, acknowledging uh, your birthday uh, salutation there, Ralph. And also Kristen May Samuels, the six-year-old daughter of uh, Charlie Samuels, the equipment manager of the Mets. There's a lot of birthdays going around tonight. 
And a happy birthday all the way around, of course, Yogi Berra, the famous Yogi Berra, celebrating his birthday at home with Carmen, his lovely wife, and I would assume watching this ball game today. There are so many Yogi Berra stories. Bill Madden in the New York Daily News with an outstanding article on yeah, Yogi today. Mm -hmm. Yogi <laughs> says a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. And baseball is 90% mental. The other half is physical. Yogi also the guy that says that 90% of the putts are short, don't go in. So the grounds rules being discussed by this umpiring crew. The Expos coming off a big game yesterday with the Philadelphia Phillies winning 13 to one, stopping the Phillies seven game winning streak. They had 13 runs and 16 hits, a season high. And Montreal coming into this game two and a half games back of the Philadelphia Phillies. The Mets are four games back of the Phillies in fourth place. And the Mets winning two out of three from the Atlanta Braves. Like father, like son. Moise Salou had a big day yesterday. Four for five, a home run. What a fine young talent he is. And he has not signed with the Expos. And what an unusual situation that is. Uh, here his father is the manager and his son is unsigned and his son is not very happy about being unsigned thinking that he should uh, command big money and uh, most people agree with him. Pretty hard to disagree. That's with right. The amount of stats that he's packed up in his short career in the major leagues last year a fantastic year. And on the mound for the New York Mets, it'll be Jason Hockamy, 0-2 for the season, losing one game to the Montreal Expos, a nine earned run average. He's worked 12 innings, given up 17 hits, what is more alarming, 13 base on balls. He walked seven his last outing. That was a career high against Cincinnati. The lineup for the Expos. And it's a tough lineup, even though they've lost a lot. Sean Barry leads it off. He'll play third. Shortstop Will Cardero batting second. Center fielder Roberto Kelly will hit third. Moises Alou, we referred to him. He'll play right field and hit fourth. Rondell White, what a good-looking player he is. He'll hit fifth. Shane Andrews, the first baseman, batting sixth. Mike Lansing, the second baseman, will hit seventh. Tim Spear will be behind the plate in bat eight. And Jeff Vassero, the left-hander, will bat ninth. And defensively for the New York Mets, it'll be David Segui in left field for the New York Mets. Ricky Otero will be in center field. Carl Everett will be in right. Eduardo Alfonso, the third baseman. Jose Vizcaino, the shortstop. Jeff Kent playing second base. And Bobby Bonilla at first base. The catcher is Kelly Stinnett and the umpires for this game. John McSherry behind home plate. Ed Montague, the umpire at first base. Charlie Williams, the umpire at second. And Greg Bonet, the umpire at third. So the first to four about to come your way as Sean Barry steps into the batter's box. Barry hitting 269, one home run, three runs batted in. And the first pitch by Hakami, a called strike. Hakami featuring a very unusual type change of pace. And that is his strikeout pitch, which is also rather unusual. He comes back with a fastball there and is fouled back into the stands. Well, at, uh, at least Jason got by the first pitch in tonight's ball game. First pitch of last Sunday's game, Jerome Walton of the Reds hit a home run. Two straight fastballs to Barry, and Hockamy appears the first two pitches to be more aggressive this evening. Yes, he does. There's a pitch outside. He said after that home run, that was hit by Walton in that game in Cincinnati that he was thinking everybody was going to have a home run off of him and that really disrupted his concentration. That's probably why he walked seven guys in that game. Absolutely. It has to be that way. It's a metal block. And this pitch fouled back into the stands. The count stays at one ball and two strikes. John Berry. Third baseman. Born in Santa Monica, California. Originally selected by Kansas City in the first round of the January 1986 draft. And again, he fouls it off. Matter of fact, the Expos have three players on their roster, and 
Three pretty good players who signed with Kansas City initially. Tim Spear, the catcher tonight. Jeff Shaw, the right-handed reliever. And Sean Barry. Barry hit 278 last year with 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in. And he fouls the fastball away. So he stays at one ball and two strikes. Expos without the services of Larry Walker, Marquise Grissom, and John Wetland, three key players from last year's team that had the best record in baseball. And the pitch low and inside the off speed pitch there, and it's two balls and two strikes. Also, Ken Hill, who is with the Cardinals now. He was their ace pitcher last year. Expos because of being a small market town saying they cannot afford to pay the salaries for those players and a ground ball to second base to Kent he picks up the out at first as Bonilla takes the throw so Hockamy picks up his first out and now will take on the shortstop Will Cordero Cordero hitting 300 one home run seven runs batted in From Puerto Rico, hit 294 last year for Montreal with 15 home runs, 63 runs batted in. And the curveball for ball one. He was signed by the Expos at the age of 16, and he rips that with a great play by Vizcaino. Ole! Yeah, but if a bullfighter uh, goes Ole, well, then he comes up with nothing. Vizcaino comes up with something. Fine play by Vizcaino. So two men away, and that'll bring up Roberto Kelly. You hope when you uh, say Ole as a bullfighter, you come up with nothing. You hope to come up with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's strike one as he goes to the curveball. No errors for Vizcaino, joined by Larkin. Jay Bell and Kevin Stocker of the Phillies. All four have not committed an error yet this year. And the count, one ball and one strike. Kelly hitting 279, one home run, six runs batted in. And this one grounded to Vizcaino, who comes up with it. And the Montreal Expos go in order, helped out by that brilliant play by Vizcaino. The score at the end of one half inning. The Expos nothing, the Mets coming up, and here's a word from Bell Atlantic. On the mound for the Montreal Expos, Jeff Frasero with a record of 3 0, the first pitch in the National League to win three. He has an earned run average of 3.71. Lifetime against the Mets, 3 and 3. Mets lineup brought to you by your tri state quality Ford dealer. Shows Ricky Otero leading it off. We'll try to get most of it in. Jose Vizcaino batting second. Jeff Kent hitting third. And the first pitch to Otero taken for ball one. Bobby Bonilla will bat fourth. Edgardo Alfonso hitting fifth. David Segui batting sixth. Carl Everett in right field hitting seventh. Kelly Stinnett behind the plate hitting eighth. And Hockamy batting ninth. And Otero takes the fastball for a call strike. Otero hitting 095. Had a base hit his first at bat in the major leagues and since then has gone one for 20. Playing in center field tonight. Brett Butler not playing and Otero bounces this one foul. They count one ball and two strikes. Defense for the Expos, Brondell White and left, Roberto Kelly in center, Moise Salou in right, Sean Barry at third, Will Cadero at short, Mike Lansing at second, and Shane Andrews at first. Tim Spear is the catcher, and on the mound, Jeff Facero. Ooh, ooh, and that is strike ooh, three. Boy, so that is nasty right split there. Finger fastball, and Facero has a good one. That has not only kept him in the big leagues, it's made him among the most effective left-handed starters in the league, and the bottom just drops out of that. Boy. 
Yeah, that was nasty. Started his career as a relief pitcher and yeah. did so well there. They made a starter out of him, and he's come on to be one of the top left-handers in the National League. A late bloomer. I'll say. Beat the Mets 9 to 6 on May 2nd for a victory earlier this year. And Jose Vizcaino takes the fastball. Lucero comes at you with a good fastball. It's up around 90, 91, 92. And then that split finger comes in there about 60 miles an hour, and the bottom drops out. And this one chopped to the shortstop, Cadero. He bobbles it, and the error will give Vizcaino the first base back. Batting third, second baseman, number 12, Jeff Kent. One of the problems with Cordero in a full season in 1993 made 33 errors, and he bobbled that ball. I think he was thinking about throwing it before he had the handle on it. So an error by Cordero. Montreal Expos with more errors than any other team in the National League. That's including the error by Will Cordero. Now the batter will be Jeff Kent. Kent in a batting slump hitting 167. Two home runs, four runs batted in. He got his first home run against Montreal. And a good play by Spear as he holds Vizcaino at first as that ball gets away. We'll give you a little history of uh, Facero and why we referred to him as a late bloomer. He's, he's signed with the Cardinals in 1984, the 22nd round. So hundreds of guys were claimed before Jeff. Then he was claimed by the White Sox in the Rule 5 draft in 89, released by the White Sox, signed by Cleveland in 1990, and then hooked on with the Expos as a six-year minor league free agent. He's and bounced around, and now he's bouncing uh, nasty splitters it's up amazing. there. Amazing yeah, how players can do that. Mm -hmm. Two or three organizations totally giving up on him, saying he has no chance to play major league ball. Somebody takes a chance, picks him up out of the minor leagues, and here he is, a pitching star. Perseverance pays off. Serrell, 3-0 and this year. A 1-0 pitch to Kent, a fastball foul back out of play. That's for the first base runner, Jose Vizcaino, reaching on the air by Cordero. And with one out, Jeff Kent with a count of one ball and one strike. This guy, you know, a short lead at first base. And Kent slices this one into right field for a base hit. This guy, you know, will go to third. Alou gets it back in. The Mets have runners at first and third is Kent. Loops a base hit to right field, and he'll be happy about that, trying to break out of that slump. A little number the other way, and you'd be surprised at how hits of that tight can get you going. Jeff has really been struggling. This guy, you know, alertly goes to third. Jeff Kent, 0 for 19 with runners in scoring position this year after being second in the National League with a 385 average under those circumstances last year. Now the batter, Bobby Bonilla, who brings a nine game hitting streak into this game. Bobby hitting 340 with two home runs, eight runs battered in. And the fastball for ball one. Runners at first and third, one man out, bottom half of the first inning, just underway here at Shea. And a four game series to come your way with the Montreal Expos. And Bonilla poops it into right field. Alou, who has a great arm, faking the catch, but coming in from third to score is Vizcaino. He wasn't fooled at all. And going to second base is Jeff Kent. So Alou. Trying to make it look as though he's going to be able to catch that ball, but the decoy did not work. Look how deep Moises Salou is. A lot of uh, young players, a lot of opposite field outfielders in that the big leagues make the mistake of 13. thinking that if a guy is a power hitter, then he has power the other way. 
Viscaino scoring on the bloop hit by Bonilla. But big guys like Bobby Bonilla get a lot of dunkers the other way, and uh, you'd be surprised how deep the opposite fielders play them, I think, erroneously. And Alou, of course, playing right field for the first time. Laurie Walker was a right fielder last year. Alou played in left. Now the batter will be Edgardo Alfonso hitting 280, and he takes the first pitch for ball one. Alfonso got his first major league hit off of Jeff Fasaro. It was a two base hit on May 2nd. In his last three game starts, Alfonso has hit 429 with six hits and 14 at bats. The 1 0 pitch, and it's in the dirt. That Spears quick back there, isn't he? You saw the play made in the dirt with Viscaino on at first base. And then he just scooped that ball. I mean, he uh, swallows those balls in the dirt up back there. Very impressive young defensive catcher, Tim Spear. Two balls, no strikes to Edgardo Alfonso. Kent the runner at second, Bonilla the runner at first. And a drive to right field for a base hit. It won't be able to score Kent. He's being held up at third. The throw in on the fly by Alou. And Alfonso with a hit there to load up the bases. He hit that ball so hard, Kent had no chance to score. Hey, that's the thing that uh, continues to impress about Alfonso. How many young hitters are coy enough to go the other way consistently with the fastball away. We've seen Alfonso do it continuously. Jeff Kent, no way he could try to score on that ball. Another hit for Alfonso. So the Mets with the bases loaded on the air and a run in. And after the air, three consecutive base hits. And that'll bring up David Segui. So Jeff Vassero being reached for a run on three hits. McGee hitting 267, one home run, six runs batted in. And that's strike one. Look at that. Mets have two bases loaded home runs, both by Todd Hundley, Todd leading the National League in that department. Record for most home runs with the bases loaded in a single season, five by Ernie Banks. One strike to count. And the breaking ball, one ball and one strike. This is a key pitch. Any even count to a hitter with the bases loaded is a key pitch because if the pitcher falls behind in the count, then the next pitch becomes more predictable. He has to come in with a fastball because there's no place to put Sagi. Becerro with the count of one ball and one strike. Base is loaded, and he gets strike two. So he gets in front now, and the command of the situation goes to the pitcher. Staying in front is always important for a pitcher, but with the bases loaded, it's doubly important. Fastball to hit right there, but Segui taking that pitch. Now he's in the hole, and Becerro with that great split-fingered fastball. And he hits it in the dirt. Good play again by Spear, and he made a terrific pick He's up quick, there. Isn't he? he is quick. His lateral movement is what is impressive. Tim Spear with three fine plays this inning, and this is the best one. That was about a 58-foot splitter. Give him credit for calling it and credit for catching it. So the count goes to two balls and two strikes.
Acero wearing that number 13. Number worn by Ralph Barranca for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The 2 2 pitch. And it is low, no swing as the first base umpire, Ed Montague, said he did not go, and that fills the count out. So it's three and two with the bases loaded. This pitch just low. No, more than just low. Well low. And Segui holds up. No doubt about Segui holding up. So nowhere to put the batter. And the three two pitch. Ball four and Pacero walks in a run and the Mets now lead it two to nothing. That's a great at bat by Segui, wasn't it? I'll say. He took the one one pitch and behind in the count one and two. Some enticing pitches from Facero. And he coaxes a walk and drives in a run in the process. So the Mets now leading two to nothing and Carl Everett will be the batter. Carl with a home run off Facero back on May the 2nd, one of his three home runs. Funny how uh, the rhythm of a pitcher can be upset by an error. Jeff Facero, 3-0 coming into the game, pitching about as well as anybody in the National League, the first three-game winner. And Cordero makes an error, error on the second batter of the game, Vizcaino. Then all of a sudden, the roof has fallen in. Three straight hits and a walk, 2-0 Mets. Carl Everett batting a 200 for the year with three home runs, six runs batted in. One strike to count to Carl Everett. Who is battling a heavy slump and a swing and a miss for strike two? One man out, bases still loaded. Bonilla, the runner at third base. Alfonso, the runner at second. Segui, the runner at third. The two strike pitch. And it's popped up in foul territory over there to shag after it is Shane Andrews. Coming in from third now is Bonilla, and he will be out. So it will be a double play as Bonilla tried to score on the short foul ball into foul territory back at first. That will end the inning. Mets do get two runs. They had three base hits. There was a walk, one air, and two men left on base. And the score at the end of one, the Mets two, the Expos nothing, and here's a word from 9X. That's a fine play by Shane Andrews, the first baseman. He had his back to home plate. Watch him wheel and throw a strike to get Bonilla. That ends the first inning. The Mets score two. And Moises Alou leading off here in the second inning. And Alou on the first pitch by Jason Hockamy. Grounds it to the third base side, fielded by Alfonso. And one pitch and one away. I think that was a good play by Bonilla. I mean, uh, you're going to, uh, you have a two run lead. You're willing to take more chances when you're up. And Andrews, Andrews with his back toward home, I mean, he wasted no time in turning and threw a strike to Tim Spear. Bonilla was out by uh, a long way, but in my judgment, it was a good play. Good forcing play. Right. And the Mets' eighth batter coming up, Kelly Stanett, so the pitcher would follow him. But the Expos executed, got the double play, and that ended the inning. Now the batter, Rondell White, and this ball pulled down the left field line and it's into the stands out of play. 
Hey, I'm around the batting cage almost for every game, and I have not seen a ball jump off the bat any more than when Rondell White makes solid contact in batting practice. And he makes solid contact right there, drills it up the alley in right center field. It'll be at least a two base hit. Otero gets it back in, and White has the first hit for the Montreal Expos, a double. He brought a 308 batting average into the game. He might be the best uh, fourth outfielder in the National League, and in my judgment, should be a regular, but where do you put him? Tony Tarasco's uh, had a fine year. Right up among the leaders in, in hitting, Roberto Kelly, you traded for those two. Moise Salou, you're not going to bench him. Rondell White, if he gets his at-bats, he's going to really develop. He is a fine-looking young player. So White at second base and Shane Andrews, the batter. Andrews hitting 269, three home runs, seven runs batted in. Andrews, a number one draft choice for Montreal, and that pitch in the dirt. Good play by Stinnett. It's ball one. Andrews taken number 11 in the nation in 1990. Born in Dallas, Texas. Lives in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Might be the only ball player to ever come out of Carlsbad, New Mexico in the major leagues. Play on at second base, it's in the dirt. Kent makes a good pickup. Fine play by Jeff Kent to prevent an error. Throw is in the dirt. Nice scoop. I can't think of uh, anybody uh, from Carlsbad, New Mexico to play in the major leagues. Carlsbad Caverns are there. Carlsbad Caverns are there. Stalactites and stalagmites galore. Maybe the reason why I know where Carlsbad is, it's kid. near where I was born. Near Santa Rita, New Mexico. Rather unusual for a ball player to come out of Carlsbad. Carl's Bad Cavern, certainly something to see. They're unbelievable. Now the 1 1 pitch hit hard into center field, chasing Otero back to the warning track. It's over his head, and it will go for extra bases. Rondell White comes in to score. Going to third base is Andrews, and he goes in safely. So Andrews who won a ball game with a home run in the ninth inning back in April for Montreal. Drives one over the head of Otero in center field for a triple. Matter of fact, that was Andrews' first start when he won that game. Hit it off Jim Gott back on the 27th of April. Otero can't get to it. And Andrews, who's a big guy but runs very well, has his first triple of his career. So the tie run is at third with one out. And Mike Lansing is the batter. The Mets playing their infield back at short and second. I'd play them in now. Yeah, I mean, you have the bottom part of the order, spear on deck and the pitcher in the hold. Why not play them in? Third baseman and first baseman are in, and the pitch outside, Lansing hitting 212, is driven in one run. I think that I think the chance here even though it's early in the game with the bottom part of the order order coming up I think you ought to have your middle infielders in in this situation and this ball popped up into left field tagging up at third base is Andrews the catch is made by Sagi. the throw to the plate is right on line but it hits the runner so the ball hitting the runner it would have been an awfully close play if it had gone by with the net there ready for the play. See, that's why the runner runs inside the line. Whenever there's a throw from the third baseman to the catcher or the left fielder to the catcher, you run inside the line. And when Andrews does it this time, the ball hits him right in the rear end. See how he's running inside the line? There's really no place for a left fielder to throw. That is perfectly legal. In fact, a good base runner yeah, tries to line up no the question. throwing line and tries to run right where that ball would go to the receiver which is inside the line right 
So it's now tied at two as the Expos come back here in the top of the second. And that will bring up Tim Spear, the catcher. And Spear takes the first pitch for a call strike. Spear hitting 667. Two for three so far this year. Had a pinch hit home run in last night's victory for Montreal. And that pitch a ball, one ball and one strike. Receiving that throw from the left fielder, you might say, well, why isn't the catcher on the first base side? He could do that. But if he catches the ball, he's got to reach back to touch the runner. So the runner has, in effect, pushed the ball toward the inside part of the field. You push it there, slide away, that's how you score. Good base running by Andrews right, right there. Ground ball to third base. Good play on it by Alfonso. The throw a little bit wide. Good job of moving across the line into foul territory by Bonilla. That ends the inning. The score tied at two on two hits. And after one and a half innings, it's a Mets two and the Expos two. And here's a word from nobody beats the Wiz. All tied up at two as the Mets come up in the bottom half of the second inning. We were talking earlier in the broadcast about the fact that cut down day is coming up on May 15th. All the clubs have to reduce their rosters from 28 players to 25. And we were just informed that Sean Andrews who tripled over the head of the center fielder Ricky Otero was one of the candidates to be sent down and certainly had a good start with three home runs and yeah, Roger Brulat was uh, he's one of the broadcasters uh, for the Expos and he was nice enough to come over and tell us that we didn't know that. But the reason is that Chad Fonville uh, was a rule five draft from San Francisco. And if you send your rule five draft back you lose him or take a shot at losing him. And uh, that's the reason that Andrews will probably be the candidate to be sent down instead of Fonville. And the first batter for the Mets here in the second Kelly Stinnett. Kelly takes the first pitch for a call strike. Stinnett hitting 300 for the year, three for 10 so far. No runs batted in as Jeff Facero with his next pitch. Ball hit hard to the third baseman, Sean Berry, who turns it into an out. One away, and that'll bring up Jason Hockaby. Facero has given up two runs on three hits but he's all even in the game as it's tied at two came into the game with a record of three and oh, a victory over the Mets included lifetime against the Mets he's three and three and Hockamy fouls it into the stands Hockamy 0 for 4 this year and lifetime he's had one hit in 20 at bats and that one hit drove in a run That set seven to the plate in the first inning and got two. And there's strike two. On deck batter, Ricky Otero. And Hakami goes back to the bench. So Facero picks up his second strikeout. And while there's a break in the action, ought to be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. It's a big hit with fans everywhere, because it won't fill you up and never lets you down, so make it a Bud Light. Ricky Otero, the other strikeout victim, striking out on a split finger fastball as he let off the game for the Mets. And the switch hitter takes a called strike. Cicero, last year with a record of eight wins and six losses. And Otero with two men out tries to butt his way on. Well, normally that would not be a good play, but Otero's a fast runner and most of his hits are singles anyway. So for a guy like Ricky Otero to bunt with two out and nobody on, it's not a bad play. The big guys, though, if they do it, that's a no-no. That's a real no-no. 
home run hitters. You can't do that. There's a line drive base hit between third and short. So Terrell, who had been one for 21, picks up a base hit, his third of the season. Let's get their fourth hit. And it brings up Jose Vizcaino. Jose safe on an error his first time up, and he scored a run. See Tim Spear looking in the dugout of the Expos, see if they want him to pitch out or not. If you're a base runner with two out, and you're the runner at first base, and you're a, uh, a threat to steal, you try to do it, generally speaking, early in the count to give the hitter a chance to hit. Big lead at first base by Otero, and that draws a throw. And Facero's got a good move, too, and Otero's never seen it. There's a look into the dugout. Felipe Alou, the manager of the Expos. Another throw to first base. Otero now has had a chance to see that move. Some of the times pitchers will give you a little decoy. They'll give you a lousy move and then all of a sudden put yeah. the good one on. Felipe Alou, 60 years old today. Again, a good sized lead by Otero at first. And the fastball low and away for ball one to Vizcaino. Dean Mock used to say that if you're a base stealing threat and you're not going to run, just keep the pitcher occupied. Maybe you'll take his mind off the hitter. Does work. So far, they're certainly concentrating on the situation with Vizcaino, not a heavy hitter at the plate, worried a lot about the runner at first base. Vizcaino hitting 260 with one home run. And again, the throw to first. Two men away, and they're really concentrating on that runner at first base. Otero incidentally hasn't had a stolen base in this major league career. His reputation does precede him. As he was a good base runner while playing for Binghamton in the Eastern League last year. This guy, you know, a 091 hitter against Facero, one for 11. And it's a fastball foul back out of play. Last year at Binghamton, Otero had 33 stolen bases in 128 games. They're still really working on him. Got to make him proud. Causing this much consideration. One ball, one strike to count to Vizcaino. And he is running the ball line to left field for a base hit. So a good fastball. Otero goes to third. A good play there as the throw comes in to the shortstop. Very good base running by Otero as he goes first to third on the base hit by Vizcaino. And the Mets now have runners at the corners with Jeff Kent at the plate. There has been so much emphasis put on how difficult it is to hit by a fast runner, behind a fast runner. In my judgment, uh, it kind of evens out because of the base runner occupying the pitcher's thought. A lot of times, the hitter gets better pitches to hit. Otero running. And Vizcaino chooses a hanging breaking ball and rifles it to left, and Otero goes to third. And now uh, Jeff Kent, the batter, Kent blooped the base at the right field his first time up. With a runner in scoring position, he has not had a base hit this year. He is 0 for 19. Last year, he was the second best in that department in the National League, hitting 385 with man in scoring position. 
111 stolen bases the last three seasons in the minors. So Otero running with that pitch and going first to third on the base hit. Got to be ready for the wild pitcher with Becerro pitching with that split finger fastball. He gets that pitch in for a called strike. It's one and one. When you think about it, Ralph, uh, the last base stealing threat that the Mets had was Mookie Wilson. And since Mookie's been gone, the Mets have been a base to base type of offense. Wait for the long ball. That's why it's uh, refreshing to see the speed of Otero. Mets have turned their ball club around. They have picked up quite a bit of speed in making their changes and the throw to first base. Carl Everett, another guy who can run. Ricky Otero may be one of the players sent down on Monday, but he'll be back. And of course, Brett Butler also right. a stolen base threat. Mm -hmm. Mets certainly have the type of ball club that can use the stolen base to some degree this year, and also the hit and run more effectively. One of one the count to Jeff Kent. Tie ball game at two, two men out. Bottom half of the second. And that ball fouled. We count one ball and two strikes. Major problem that Jeff has had, you know, it's kind of been a mushrooming type of thing. You go 0 for 5 with a guy in scoring position, then you start pressing a little bit, swinging at bad balls. And more than anything else, that has been his problem. He has swung at too many bad balls with runners in scoring position. Jeff with an outstanding year last year got off to a tremendous start in the month of April. Ended up hitting 292 for the Mets. And it's hit in the air to right field. Moise Salou, the right fielder, makes the catch and that retires the side. The Mets get two hits and leave two. The score at the end of two, the Mets two, and the Expos two. Now here's a word from Meineke. Top of the third and Jeff Facero, the pitcher, batting for the Montreal Expos. 2-2 ball game. And on the mound, Jason Hockamy, and that pitch fouled off. Facero 0 for 4 this year. That's got two in the first. The Expos got two back in the top of the second. Now in the third inning, and that one in there called strike three. So Facero looking at the fastball. And he becomes the first strikeout victim for Hockamy. That'll bring up Sean Barry. Hockamy has given up two runs on two hits. He has struck out one and walked none. Barry grounded out to the second baseman his first time up. An idea about Bunning. Takes for ball one. One ball, one strike. Barry started on opening night in Pittsburgh for the Expos and strained his lower back sliding into second base he was caught stealing for the first time in 26 tries going back of course to last year backs okay now however and that one fouled off kind of person you wouldn't think could be successful on that many stolen base attempts. He does it rather quietly. Not known as a base stealer, he has no stolen bases this year in one attempt. And this one hit in the air to right center field. It should be caught. A lot of hang time there. And over there to make the play as ever.
That was the right fielder's ball because the right-hander hit it, and the ball's coming back to Everett and away from Otero. So Everett, properly with that right hand up, makes the catch. So two men away. Incidentally, Barry last year had only 12 stolen bases, so that record accumulated over two years. Everett makes the play, two men away, and Will Cordero the batter. Cordero lined out the short his first time up. And he shows bunt and takes strike one. Darrell brought a 300 average into this game. That's strike two. The Expos as a team hitting 273. Another line drive. This one taken on the short hop by Kent. And Cadero has lined out twice. Nothing to show for it. A one, two, three inning. The score at the end of two and a half innings. The Mets two, the Expos two. Now here's a word from your tri-state Ford dealer. Tie ball game as we go to the bottom half of the third. Sweet shot, huh? Not a bad evening here at Shea Stadium after a dreary tap day. And Mother's Day Sunday, two days away, huh? Mother's Day Sunday, and the Mets will be playing a night game on Sunday. It'll be on ESPN, game time at 8 o'clock. Afternoon game tomorrow afternoon. Dave Malecki will be on the mound against Pedro Martinez. Then the final game of the series will be Monday night. It'll be Pete Harney scoring for the New York Mets. Mets have never beaten Pedro Martinez. He's 5-0 and lifetime against New York. Bobby Bonilla will lead it off. Bonilla with a blue base hit to right field. His first time up and Lacero with a fastball. Pedro Martinez, one of the hard-throwing pitchers in the game. Good changeup. Ramon, his brother. Pedro acquired from the Dodgers. The 1 0 pitch to Bonilla. One ball, one strike. Bobby, with his base hit his first time up, now is hit in 10 consecutive ball games. Batting at 352, two home runs and nine runs batted in. Drove in the first Mets run with his base hit to right field in that first inning. And the split finger in the dirt, two balls and one strike. Jeff Facero, 3 0 on the mound. He was the winning pitcher against Hockamy up in Montreal on May the 2nd. There's a ball hit deep to left field. It's way back, going, going, and it is gone. Goodbye. Bobby Bonilla with the home run, and the Mets take the lead 3 2. But Jeff Facero does not like to see Bobby Bonilla come up to the plate. Not only is this Bonilla's third home run of the year, it's his third home run off Facero and only 14 at bats for his career. He's six for 14 with three home runs now against Facero. And the batter is Edgardo Alfonso. Edgardo single to right field his first time up. Batting the 308 for the year with a home run and he takes high one ball and one strike. That was the third home run given up by Facero this year. And it puts the Mets up three to two. This ball hit deep to center field. It's way back. Roberto Kelly to the warning track can't get to it. It's off of the wall a one bouncer and Alfonso with his second hit of the ball game and a deep drive to center field. Does he look good? That opened your eyes, didn't it? Ooh. It did mine. 
And it did Dallas Green. Look at the smile on Dallas Green's face. He loves this 21-year-old from Venezuela. Alfonso smokes this ball. Kelly watches it short hop the fence. Not only can he hit for average, but when you hit a ball that far to center field, about 408 feet, you show you can hit for power too. Oh, he just drove that ball with that good level swing. So a runner at second base with no one out. The Mets now have their seventh base hit off of Cerro. And the batter is David Segui, and he bunts the ball out to the first base side, fielded by Facero. The throw goes to Lansing, should say to the first baseman, Andrews, and they get the out there. But Alfonso goes over to third. That is another sacrifice punt for the New York Mets. They're 22nd already this year. That's a pretty good combination. 22 sacrifices, 56 extra base hits leads the league. And they have two tonight, two in this inning. That's a good play right there. That's going to bring the infield in against Everett, a guy who's been struggling. He's got good speed. I would imagine Alfonso will make the ground ball go through and not try to score unless it does go through. And Everett with the first pitch, a swing and a miss, strike one. Everett with a home run off Facero back on May the second. One of his three home runs. Adding at 196 for the year. Yeah, the sacrifice is only good if the next guy contributes. Got to make contact here. Everett has shown a propensity for striking out. That's strike two. If he doesn't pick up Alfonso with Stanett on deck, they'll probably walk Stanett. If he doesn't pick him up, it's almost like hitting a long drive and then missing the putt, Ralph. That's right. <laughs> you wasted. Just waste that big drive. Two strikes to count. And that breaking ball in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Another smother by Spear. He has really spared them back there, hasn't he? Played a good defensive game already. Infield in for a play at the plate. One ball, two strikes to count. The Mets leading three to two, a runner at third, one out. We're in the bottom half of the third. And that went close, but called the ball. And it's two balls and two strikes. Spear outside. And Facero misses outside, clearly outside. That puts a count of two balls and two strikes. One after a bad pitch. Split finger fastball. Everett strikes out the 18th time he struck out this year. And that sacrifice now has been wasted. Well, the splitter right there. Carl going after it. Usually when that pitch is down, hitters swing over that pitch, and that was the case there. Third strikeout for Facero, and that could be a big one as it brings up Kelly Stanett. Kelly will be walked intentionally, so they're going to walk Kelly Stanett, who hit the ball hard his first time up when he grounded out the third, and they'll go after the pitcher. Jason Hockamy. Yeah, th this makes all the sense in the world because in pitching around Stanett, you might get a wild pitch with that splitter. No way that you pitch to Stanett in this situation with Hockamy coming up. Two balls, no strikes on the intentional walk. There's ball three. And ball four. So the intentional walk to Stanett, putting runners at first and third with two men out. And that'll bring up Jason Hockamy, who has struck out his first time up. 
how can be 0 for 5 this year is 1 for 21 in his major league career. Third baseman Sean Barry in close about 70 feet away at third base. Runner at third is Alfonso the runner at first base to net and the pitcher the hitter. That's on top by one. And the swing and miss. You remember the game against Philadelphia about seven years ago when Glenn Wilson was on at first base, Mike Schmidt on at third, tie ball game, and Glenn Wilson broke off a first, slipped the left hander, I forget who the left hander for the Mets was, threw to first. And Schmidt walked home. The old it's one fall of those, down trick. Yeah, those, it was one of those decoy plays. Left-hander, of course, facing the runner at third. He falls down about 15 feet off the bag. And the minute the left-hander throws to first, the guy from third breaks. The Mets, do, however, do not employ that in their offense. The old fall down sucker play, and it certainly worked that time. I remember it well. There's a ball outside, and it's one and two. No swing, says Greg Bonet, the third base umpire. There was a time in baseball that umpires would never wear glasses. You see him in the lobby of the hotel reading a newspaper with glasses on, but never on the ball field. One ball, two strikes, and strike three. So the strategy works. That ends the inning. The Mets do get one in the home run by Bonilla. And they leave two. And the score at the end of three, it's a Mets three and the Expos two. And here's a word from Budweiser. Top of the fourth inning, and now for the play-by-play, -play, Tim McCarver. Bobby Bonilla gave the Mets the lead in the first inning with a single to right field driving in one, and in the third inning with a home run, his third of the year. Roberto Kelly takes strike one from Jason Hockamy. Kelly grounded to short his first at bat. 3-2 New York. One and one to Kelly. High with the change. Two balls and a strike to Roberto, who last year at this time was Bobby. Then he went in a slump and said, I'm going back to Roberto. Back to, he's gone from Roberto to Bobby to Roberto. Hit to right field. Carl Everett there. Five in a row now, retired by Hakami. This copyrighted telecast is authorized under television rights granted by Sterling Doubleday Enterprises, LP, solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Sterling Doubleday Enterprises, LP, is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is likewise prohibited. Here's Moises Salou. Change hit foul. Alou grounded to third, his first at bat. And Brett Butler giving lessons as a right-hander, probably talking about taking the hands forward. He's jammed Izzalu, and Vizcaino bobbles it. Though so he showed earlier that Vizcaino had not made an error all year, that's his first one, and a lose aboard. Ball bouncing up a little bit higher than Vizcaino figured at the last second. Had the glove down, you see the ball coming up over the top of the glove. And an error will be charged. Rondell White doubled his first at bat, one of two hits for the Expos. Then he scored on a triple by Shane Andrews. Ground ball, nice play, Alfonso to Ken, and they turned it. Oh, brother. You're going to be seeing a lot of that young man for a long time. Still three to two Mets, middle of the fourth. We're back after this from Nobody Beats the Wiz.
This game with the Mets leading 3-2 here in the bottom of the fourth is brought to you by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers and by your Tri-State Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Tim McCarver and Ralph Kiner here at Shea Stadium. A good ball game and a fine play again by Alfonso. Edgardo comes up with this ball, a very accurate quick toss to Kent. Gets a perfect throw from the third baseman and then the double play for two quick outs and the ending. Lead off batter, Ricky Otero. Single his last time up. He's one for two. He wanted to bunny holes up, ball one. The Mets with seven hits. The Expos with two. Each side has one error. Tap toward third, and it's foul. One and one to Otero. The error, however, committed by the Expos was much more critical as far as Facero was concerned. With one out and nobody on in the first inning, Jose Vizcaino hit a routine ground ball to Will Cordero at short, and he booted it, and that opened the gates to two runs. Vizcaino, the Mets shortstop, made an error with one out and nobody on in the fourth inning, and the next pitch, Rondell White grounded into a double play. Another bunt attempt, he takes strike two. One and two to Otero. In our National League scoreboard, the Rockies winning again. And the Braves with a shutout. That's Greg Maddox, I believe. Phillies with a shutout over the Astros. Pirates and Giants later on as are the Cardinals visiting Dodger Stadium in L.A. Two and two now to Otero. Cap toward third. Barry will have to hurry. Just got him. One out here in the fourth. Your number 15 for Save Jeff Facero started both openers for the Expos this year. He started in Pittsburgh back on April 26th. And then he started in Montreal on May 2nd against the Mets. They had a sellout up there in Montreal. 46,000. Saw the Expos beat the Mets on opening night in Montreal 9-6. Here's Vizcaino. Jose on on an error and scored a run in the first and he singled in the second. Slider is low, two balls and no strikes to Jose Vizcaino. Outside, ball three, three and nothing. Strike on the corner, three and one to Jose Vizcaino with the Mets on top here in the fourth, three to two. Jeff Kinn on deck. Vizcaino lifts one down the right field line, and in fair territory, Alou makes the play. Two outs here in the fourth, and up comes Kent. Bacero, 32 years old, was born in Springfield, Illinois. That's the land of Lincoln. 
So uh, don't look for him to throw any spitters. He's an honest pitcher, right? I never told a lie. Well, that was George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota American League scoreboard. You can digest that. <laughs> Ken hits it hard, but a Lou is there. So Kent's problems continue as he lines to a Lou, and the Mets go in order for the first time in this game, but they lead it three to two. We go to the fifth after this from Bob's Stores. It was cloudy all day in New York, but it has turned into a rather pleasant evening. It's supposed to be a good weekend. Weather in the 70s both tomorrow and Sunday. And Dynamets Dash Day tomorrow. The kids uh, really liked that last year. They had a chance to run the bases after the game. And weather permitting, they'll be given that same opportunity tomorrow as Shane Andrews takes a ball from Jason Hockamy, a 3-2 Met lead. Andrews with a triple and an RBI and a run scored in one at bat. Change hit to center. Otero, one out. When's the first time that you ever set foot on a major league field? Uh, the first major league game that I saw was in 1951. Eddie Stanky was the manager of the Cardinals. Uh, I had my picture taken uh, with Eddie. Uh, I was playing with Bemis Bags at the time, a bag company in Memphis. <laughs> Mike Lansing takes a fastball outside. My first time on a major league field was when I signed and went to St. Louis. I was a uh, week out of high school, 17 years old, uh, in 1959. Had to be a big thrill. Whew. First time I got on the major league field was the first game I ever played it. So, run the bases on a major in a major league ballpark. That's got to be something special. Two balls and a strike to Mike Lansing. He had a sacrifice fly, driving in his second run of the year, his first time up. Change to third. Alfonso, two outs. The only trouble that Hakami has had tonight was in the second inning when with one out and nobody on, Rondell White doubled, and then Shane Andrews hit a ball a ton over the head of Ricky Otero in center. Andrews got a triple out of it, scoring White, and then Mike Lansing drove in Andrews with a sack fly. That's really the only problems that Hakami has had tonight. Two out here in the fifth. Tim Spear, the catcher, is the better. Grounded foul. Low ball one, one and one to Tim Spear. The big out because at the very worst, you would have the pitcher Jeff Facero leading off the sixth inning. Fastball on the corner, a ball and two strikes now to Spear. So this is not an insignificant at bat. Those not things, that any are, but I mean. Yeah, but it's very important to, to retire this batter so that pitcher will lead off the next inning. This one hit deep to left center, and Sagi is over and can't get to it. David barehands it off the wall, and Spear has a double. So Spear with three hits on the year, all for extra bases, a homer and two doubles. And all the hits in this game against Hockamy have been extra base hits, two doubles and a triple. He has to play it on the bounce, and that clears the pitcher. Fazaro, Fazaro is the batter. Jeff struck out his first at bat. Three two Mets here in the fifth. Fazaro is jammed with the fastball. Nothing and one to Jeff Fazaro with Tim Spear on at second, and two outs.
Curve hit foul. And down was Luis Pujols, the first base coach for the Expos. Nothing in two to Jeff Facero. Breaking ball, Gotti. So the Expos are down without scoring in the fifth. The Mets lead it 3-2, middle of five, and we're back after this from your Tri-State Toyota dealer. 3-2 Mets here in the bottom of the fifth. Seven hits for New York. Three for the Expos. One error by each team. The most costly error. The error by Will Cordero in the first inning. And here's Ralph Kiner in for the play-by-play -play just in time for our new Dodge quiz of the evening. Ralph this is a tough one. Name the only player to play for all four of the original expansion franchises. That would be the Mets, the Astros, the Angels, and the Senators, who later became the Rangers. And a hint, he's a future Hall of Famer. Future Hall of Famer. That means uh, he's not, not in, in yet. there yet. Uh -uh. And that would mean he has been on the ballot for some time. Would it? I would think, because you go back uh, to play with the Mets in 62. That doesn't mean he played with them when they were first originated. Just played for them. I guess that would be it. Very interesting. Yeah, played with all the expansion teams. Bobby Bonilla, the batter, Bobby with two hits and two at bats. His last one, a home run to put the Mets up three to two. His first one drove in the Mets' first run. And this one topped out in front of the plate. Tim Spear with an easy play, and they get Bonilla out. I just got it. Good. Nolan Ryan. That, Nolan Ryan. That has to be. Got to be. Yeah, you're right. He played with Washington Rangers. Okay, he played with the. Okay. Texas Rangers. Rangers, right, okay. And Houston, now, that'll do it. Now, you got it. Call him Ryan. Think he'll make the Hall of Fame? <laughs> got a shot at it. <laughs> Nolan Ryan, who pitched for the Mets and was part of that team in 1969. And you know, only the expansion teams did he play for. Played for nobody other than the uh, the expansion teams. Which accounts for the fact that his one loss record isn't much better than it is. Because he played for the Mets in yeah. those early days. Mm -hmm. What a dominating pitcher he was. Uh, 5,700 strikeouts or thereabouts. Almost 1,700 more than Steve Carlton, who's in second place. Unbelievable. <laughs> Edgardo <laughs> Alfonso, the batter, he's two for two in this game with a single and a double. Mets have had seven hits as they lead three to two. And the ball gets away from the catcher, Spear. He'll have to complete the strikeout by throwing to first base. So Alfonso is struck out. So for the first time, Becerro gets Bonilla and Alfonso, and that'll bring up David Segui. That's a splitter in the dirt. Another fine play by Tim Spear, who has been all over the place tonight. He smothers that pitch and recovers in time to throw out Alfonso. That'll bring up David Segui, who is 0 for 0. He's been to the plate twice, but no official at bats. Walked in a 3-2 pitch his first time up and sacrificed his second. That's have less six men on base in this game. They've had base runners in every inning but the fourth. And the first pitch swung on and missed. He had 267 for the year with one home run, six runs batted in. And that pitch a ball. Home plate umpire John McSherry, Ed Montague, the umpire at first. Charlie Williams, the umpire at second, and Greg Bonet, the umpire at third. The first time we've seen this crew. Sherry, the crew chief. 
And a split finger fastball missed one and two. Rosero with five strikeouts. He's averaged five strikeouts a game so far this year. Opposition hitting 266 against him coming into this game. And it's just outside. That time the fastball, two and two. Cerro came into this game with an earned run average at 3.71. Leading pitcher in the National League with three wins and no losses. We mentioned earlier that Pacero was the first to reach three wins in the National League. The first guy to do it in the in major in the major leagues was Apier, Kevin Apier with the Kansas City Royals. He did it in the first seven games. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Apier almost on his way to fame with a no-hitter. He worked six and two-thirds innings in his first start. And they took him out of that game with a no-hitter going. Only one pitcher's ever pitched a no-hitter on opening day, and that was Bob Feller. Rapid Robert. One-nothing win over the White Sox. Two and two. In this top foul. That is the only game in Major League history where the batting averages of the opposing ball club never changed. Everybody started that game with a 0 0 0 batting average, and at the end of the game, they were all hitting 0 0 0. Two and two the count. The Mets leading three to two. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Two men out. That's strike three. So strikeout number six, a one, two, three inning. And the score at the end of five. It's a Mets three, the Expos two, and here's a word from your tri-state Jeep and Eagle dealer. Back here at Shea Stadium, the top of the sixth inning, the Mets leading by a score of three to two, and Sean Barry to lead it off. Jason Hockamy on the mound, and Barry lines it down the left field line. Be a tough play for the left fielder to stop that ball in time. The throw into second is not in time. So David Segee makes a good try on a very difficult play, but Barry leads it off with a double. Well, David slipped going to his right, and it was. Uh, a very good play to make it close at second base. Slipping right there. Getting to his feet quickly. And completing the play to make it uh, rather close at second base. First time that Montreal's had their leadoff batter on. Barry with the double represents the time run at second with no one out. And Will Cadero will be the batter. Cadero's hit the ball hard twice. Lining out the short, and this time he hits it into right center. It'll be a base hit, and it will be extra bases. Barry comes in to score. That will tie it up, and Cadero in with a double. So back-to-back -back doubles here in the sixth inning, and the Montreal Expos have tied it, and they have the go-ahead run at second with no one out. Third time up, and Cordero appeared to be looking for the ball away. He got it and drills it into right center. Two consecutive doubles on three pitches. Barry scores the tying run of the game, and that will get the Mets' bullpen active. Five hits now for the Expos, and all five have been extra base hits. They have not had a single. Roberto Kelly the batter and he takes outside for ball one. In the bullpen for the Mets Blaze Minor. So it's tied at three the Mets have out hit the Expos seven to five at the Expos in a position to go ahead. 
And Kelly takes low, two balls and no strikes. Kelly starting his major league career with the Yankees in 1987. And he hits it in the right center field. Everett back to make the play. Tagged up at second is Cadero. He'll go over to third. The throw is a strong throw, but not in time. Everett with three assists. Cadero going in standing up at third base. I think Alfonso gave him a decoy. Like there was no play on him. You can clearly see Kelly trying to go the other way, even though the ball was inside. Good piece of hitting by Kelly. Watch him fight this ball off the other way. Well, that's a good at bat by Roberto Kelly. Alfonso giving Cordero the decoy, and he went in standing up at third. Everett with three assists, leading the National League and assists, has that strong arm. And now, Greg Pavlik, the pitching coach of the Mets, out to talk to his pitcher. The Mets had their infield stationed in for a play at the plate against the cleanup hitter Moises Alou. Here's that play. Watch Alfonso giving the decoy to Cordero and Cordero realizing the play is behind him but uh, made what should have been a no contest play rather close. Now you got several options here. If you walk Alou then you can bring in Miner to face White or a pinch hitter for White. Of course, if you walk a Lou, the chances of a big inning are greater, so they're going to pitch to him. Lou is 0 for 2 in the game. Infield in, hit down to third and off of the glove of Alfonso, and the throw to second base will not be in time. So a Lou drives in the go ahead run. He gets credit for a double, and the Expos have the lead. When people talk about the little parts of the game. Had Kelly not gotten Cordero to third base, the infield is back instead of in. And because it's in, the ball takes a bad hop over the glove of Alfonso. Had he been back, that ball's a routine ball. So credit Roberto Kelly getting Cordero to third base. And now the bad hop double by Alou puts the Expos ahead for the first time tonight. And they continue to not have a single in this game. That was a double. So they've had a total of six hits in the game. They've all been extra base hits. The batter, Rondell White, with a double back in the second inning, one for two, for the count of one and oh. Throw to second, fairly close. Good throw by Hakami to Kent. This is very close at second. One ball, no strikes. And that pitch, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Akami working here in the sixth inning. And trailing four to three. Gets a strike, two balls and one strike. If he gets white out, then he stays in the game. If white gets on, he's gone. That's my guess. Action in the bullpen. Again, a play at second. This one not close. Alou's father, the manager of the Montreal Expos. Let's go, Rondell! That's ball three. Three balls and one strike. I say so Lou with two uncles that played in the major leagues. As long as, as well as his father, Matty Alou and Jesus Alou. That's ball four. So White walks. First walk given up by Hakami, and we'll see whether or not they'll make a pitching change.
Runners at first and second. Right hand batter coming up. You know Dallas is thinking right here. I guess uh, under normal situations, Hockamy would be gone, but Dallas with young pitchers says that, well, it's part of the growth situation that uh, a pitcher is under, and they're going to have to eventually learn to pitch themselves out of it, and that's what Dallas is thinking right now, obviously. And the first pitch to Anders, fouled back out of play, strike one. Andrews with a triple in the second inning and a run scored. Also a slide to center. One man out, top of the sixth inning. The Mets at double play depth. Montreal with runners at first and second. One strike to count. Hockamy back and missing outside with the changeup. One ball and one strike. Andrews, the batter, played triple A ball last year. In all of his years in the minors, he's never hit 300. He has shown some power, and this one popped up, and it should be playable. Stanette over there, Bonilla over there, Bonilla makes the catch. And Andrews is out. Well, it shouldn't have been that close. The call on that ball is not Second either of the guys who should three. catch it. The call is the pitchers. The pitcher makes the call and holds the other guy. That's an old Dodger play. A lot of times, uh, people in the stands, they're yelling, they're excited, they're cheering. You can't hear the other guy call, and this should not be this close. Stanette does not hear Bonilla. Bonilla looks at Kelly, and it's Bonilla who grabs it out of the hand of Stanette. But Hakami should be over there calling Bonilla and grabbing Stanette. Much easier play for Bonilla. Now the batter will be Mike Lansing, and he goes after the first pitch for strike one. Lansing drove in a run with a sack fly back in the second inning. That tied the ball game. His next time up, he grounded out the third with no one on. One strike to count. Two men out. Runners at first and second. There's strike two. Well, Hockamy snuck that one by. Using the fastball, and he's out in front with a two strike count. Alou, the runner at second base. White, the runner at first. Expos leading four to three with two runs in here in the sixth inning. This one hit deep to left field. It's going, going. It is gone. Goodbye. A three-run home run for Mike Lansing, his first home run of the year. And the Expos take the lead by a score of six to three. Make that seven to three. So here comes Dallas Green, and that will be all for Hockamy. So Hockamy unable to get the big out. And the Expos leading 7-3 to three with the three-run home run. Hockamy came into this game with a record of 0-2. And, and a new pitcher coming in for the Mets. And this call to the bullpen is brought to you by Bell Atlantic. Seven to three, Montreal, a new pitcher in for the Mets. Hockamy is out of there, and Blast Miner, his fifth game, he is one and oh, with an earned run average of three. He's worked six innings and given up two earned runs, two home runs, one of those to Rondell White of the Expos. You know, Ralph, control is not only throwing strikes it's knowing when to throw a ball 
And with the count 0-2 to Mike Lansing, Lansing got a cookie and crunched it. 0-2 pitch. And it's not that uh, you have to throw it four feet inside or four feet outside, but you can't on an 0-2 count pitch a hitter like it's 2-0 and, and that ball right down the pipe. Fastball right down the middle and Lansing with a three-run home run. So Jason will tuck that away, and uh, the next time, you hope you have enough chances to, to put into effect the next time what you didn't do this time. But that time, that 0-2 pitch right down the pipe. That'll bring up Tim Spear, who has doubled in two at-bats, and the slider hit on the ground to the shortstop, Vizcaino, the throw to first base, and that retires the side. So, last minor in one pitch retires the side. But in the inning, five big runs by the Montreal Expos and the score at the end of five and a half innings. It is Montreal seven, the Mets three, and here's a word from your Tri-State Toyota dealer. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Montreal Expos getting the lead with five runs in the top of the sixth inning. And for the Mets, it'll be the bottom of the batting order coming up. All the hits by the Montreal Expos have been extra base hits. They have left one man on base. The Mets have left six on. As you look at the starting pitcher, Jeff Facero, who is looking on game win number four. He came into this game with a record of 3-0. and His first batter will be Carl Everett. Carl in the game has no hits and two at-bats. Becerro has struck out six batters in this game. One of them, Everett. And the left-hander's next pitch, a fastball hit the center field, moving quickly to his left is Roberto Kelly, and Everett is out. That'll bring up Kelly Stanett. Kelly has grounded out. He also was walked intentionally in the third inning. The walk that was intentional to Stanett set it up with runners at first and third. But Hockamy, who was the next batter, was struck out to end the inning. That pitch grounded foul for strike one. Pitcher is due up next. The Mets have a pinch hitter ready as Stanette misses that delivery, strike two. Now you look back in a game like this, and uh, as you see Brooke Fordyce on deck, he'll be the pinch hitter for Blast Minor. Look back at a game like this, and you look at all your chances early. The Mets with the bases loaded, two runs in, one out in the first inning. And they couldn't score anymore as Bobby Bonilla was thrown out at home on an attempt to score on a foul ball hit by Carl Everett. You're not going to get many chances against a pitcher of the caliber of Jeff Facero. Fastball fouled away one and two. As a matter of fact, the Mets had a lot of chances way over the normal against Facero and couldn't really take advantage of it. They left two on in the first, two on in the second, two on in the third. Since then, Facero has really settled in. Tired the last eight to face him. And they count two balls and two strikes. When you get an opportunity against a top flight pitcher, you got to take advantage of it. Two balls, two strikes to Kelly Stinnett. And it's hit hard toward third, picked off by Barry. The throw to first base for the out. So two men away for the Mets here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Brooke Fordyce will be the pinch hitter for the pitcher Blast Miner. Well, 
or nice without a base hit this year. And he hits it hard to right center field. It might drop in. It will. It'll be extra bases. Fordyce going to second base and holding there as Roberto Kelly cuts it off, then stumbles. And Fordyce with a double. Well, Fordyce with his first hit of the season. He's been up only once before. Yeah, first hit of uh, his career, and they'll get the ball. Retrieved by Brett Butler. So Brooke Fordyce with a double and the first hit of his career and uh, be a, a big moment in Brooks' life because I don't think it's a secret. He will probably be one of the two players sent down on Monday. And the thing about Brooke, all of his options are gone. And he could be uh, traded, try to move. He's a Fine young prospect still, and he plays a position that a lot of organizations don't have a lot of. He's a catcher. And now the batter is Ricky Otero, and he takes the first pitch for a called strike. Then the Mets have the Mets have Todd Hunley, they have Kelly Stinnett, and in an emergency, they have Tim Bogar, who would be their third catcher. So that's uh, one of the reasons that Fordyce is expendable. It's nice to see him get a get a hit. You never forget those. First one in the major leagues, and this ball popped up on the second base side. So Ricky Otero, who was one for three, is now one for four as a catch ends the inning. One hit, one left, and the score at the end is six. The Expos seven, the Mets three, and here's a word from Budweiser. We're going to the top of the seventh. Montreal Expos leading seven to three. You've got a chance to see Brooke Fordyce get his first major league hit. The ball thrown into the dugout. Watch Butler. <laughs> Fakes throwing it into the stands. <laughs> Fordyce comes in and gets congrats. He gets a silent treatment. Nobody, oh, he finally got a handshake. New pitcher in for the New York Mets, Kevin Lohman, earned run average at 10.8. He is 0-1 of the year with no saves. And Lohman selected by the Mets for the Braves in the Rule 5 draft in 1994. And he is a new pitcher, and here is Tim McCarver once again. Kevin's first pitch to Jeff Facero is low, ball one. Lucero has struck out twice, but more importantly, he is up for the third time in this ball game. Pitcher's main concern at bats, not hits. You get three or four at bats in a game, that means you've done well. It's one and one to Facero. Ball two from Loman. Seven to three Montreal here in the seventh. Count is even now, two and two to Jeff Facero. Lined foul, still two and two. The Mets took the lead in the first with two runs. The Expos tied it in the second inning with two. Bobby Bonilla's home run in the third. Made it three to two, but Montreal came back with five in the sixth inning. That's where we are, seven to three. Ball three, full count to Facero. Montreal has yet to have a single in this game. All their hits have been extra base hits. Seven of them. Ball four. So Loman comes in and walks the pitcher. Jeff Facero, and that'll bring up the leadoff batter, Sean Barry. Day in and day out at home or on the road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. Won't fill you up, never let you down, so make it a Bud Light. Sean Barry doubled to lead off the sixth inning. That was at five run sixth. 
capped by a three run homer by Mike Lansing the second baseman his first of the year. And the splitter is low to Barry. One ball and no strikes to Sean. It's an odd offensive game for the Expos. As Ralph said, no singles, seven extra base hits. There have been five doubles, a triple, and a home run by seven players. So seven extra base hits by seven Expos. The only non-contributor other than Facero, Roberto Kelly, who's 0 for 3. It's 1 and 1 to Barry. Kelly, the only man not to get on base. Facero with a walk did reach. Good splitter there. And it's a ball and two strikes to Barry. Ironically, Roberto Kelly had a great series against the Mets up in Montreal. He was six for 14, hitting 429. And in this ball game, 0 for 3. The Expos beat the Mets two to nothing, or I should say two out of three in Montreal. The game the Mets won was capped by a pinch hit grand slam home run in the 10th inning by Todd Hundley. Hewed toward first. And Bobby Bonilla's only play is to step on first as Facero moves to second. One out here in the seventh. Shortstop number 12, Will Cordero. Kevin Lohman was drafted in the Rule 5 draft December of last year from the Atlanta Braves organization. And as everybody knows, the Braves can afford to give up pitching. They are so strong in that department. Kevin, 10 and 8. And 26 starts for Richmond, the AAA affiliate of Atlanta, last year. And the curve is low to Will Cordero. It's supposed to be a nice weekend. Clear and sunny tomorrow and Sunday. Chance to get out to a ball game. One and nothing to Will Cordero and the curveball for a strike one and one. Our next broadcast will be next Thursday night in Houston. First chance to see last year's most valuable player, Jeff Bagwell. Cordero takes ball two. He did not go around, says Ed Montague, the first base umpire. Two balls and a strike to Cordero. Houston on top in the Central Division. Off to a 9-5 and five start. Chicago won their ball game today. To actually go into a tie for first with Houston. As you look at our National League scores. Tapped foul. The Braves behind Greg Maddox. He is still in there. Last year's Cy Young Award winner. He's won three in a row. Billy's up four to one now over Houston. Cardinals and Dodgers later on, as are the Pirates at Candlestick in San Francisco. Alex just left the ball game in the eighth inning of that game. Grounded off the glove of Loman. Facero will go to third base, and it will probably be an error on Kevin Loman. That ball right off his glove. Center fielder, number 28, Roberto Kelly. Now the ball topped out. Should have been an easy play for Loman. And it isn't. It'll be charged as an error, so runners out first and third. Well, Kevin frustrated. It has been a frustrating evening. Not the whole evening. The first five innings, the Mets were ahead, but then the Expos exploding for five in the sixth. And now with runners on at first and third, Roberto Kelly, the batter, he's 0 for 3. He takes ball one, one and nothing to Kelly.
Why would you uh, look at the third base coach that long with runners on at first and third? This is uh, this is one of those swing the bat deals. Yeah, hit the ball and hit it hard. Huge foul, a bad ball. Uh, fouled by Kelly and bad balls seem to be Kelly's fort. As a matter of fact, on Wednesday in Philadelphia, he walked for the first time this year. He walked twice in that game. Gary Manuel, the third base coach. But Roberto Kelly, a bad ball hitter. There goes Cordero, and it's fouled off. One ball and two strikes to Roberto Kelly. Well, the more you see Will Cordero, the more he reminds you of Manny Trio, the former second baseman with the Athletics and the Phillies, primarily with the Phillies. And the Cubs. And the Cubbies. A ball and two strikes to Roberto Kelly. One on. Make that one out and two on here in the seventh. Seven to three Montreal. Andy Trio's agent got more money than any agent in the business. Got 100%. 100%. She? <laughs> it was his wife. <laughs> Breaking ball popped up right side tough play for Kent and it's a foul ball but Jeff Kent shading towards second base for the double play had a long way to run and couldn't catch up still one and two to Kelly one thing about Kent he's got to be a Johnson and Johnson man he dives for more balls dives in the bags dives at first base you gotta be in the Olympics he really gets that uniform dirty dives more than Greg Luganis yeah It's like a fastball inside to Kelly here. And it was, and he was jammed, but he fights it off to stay alive, still one and two. Kelly from Panama City, Panama. As a matter of fact, when the United States Army was down, taking Manuel Noriega out of Panama City, as we take a look at the Toyota American League scoreboard, Kelly was mistaken down there he was actually taken by the Panamanian army as he strikes out and it was a frightening situation there for a while first strike out for Loman two outs as Roberto right Kelly uh, saw his Moises. life pass before him however he did convince the Panamanians that he was one of them and fortunately for Roberto he escaped unscathed so there are two outs now and Moise Salou the batter Alou one for three he doubled in a run in the sixth inning cued to right field and look at that thing that's a hit almost like his uncle would have gotten and Kent squirts it by and now Everett throws it away the throw home out at home so Cordero is out in one of the oddest plays. However, on the base hit by Alou, Facero scores, and that makes it 8-3 to three, Montreal. We'll be back after this from TWA. That looks like a Willie Masconi pool shot to right field by Alou, Ralph, to make it 8-3. I like the way you described it, the hit like his uncle might have got, referring to Matty Alou, who had led the National League in hitting, but he used to get a ton of these kind of hits. 
And this is the base hit by Moises Alou as he serves this one out to the right side. Kent goes out there and it's a skate save here as he kicks it by Everett who finally picks it up. Everett throws wild to third base. Second base actually, the ball's picked up by the third baseman, Alfonso, and he throws home and they get Cordero trying to score. So the Mets did get the out finally on that play on the throw home. So on the play, it was an RBI for a Lou and a throwing error on Carl Everett, allowing a Lou to go to second base. And a case could be made that two errors should have been given on the play one on Kent and one on Everett. Eight to three, Montreal. And Jose Vizcaino, the batter. And it's ball two from Facero. Alou uh, with two hits on the evening. And I don't know if you saw USA Today in uh, section D this morning, but Picasso's Mayor A. Infant was sold for almost $12 million, and there it is. That was sold uh, this past week. Mayor A. Infant, that is, of course, is French, and you'll pardon my French accent, but it means mother and child. And it's two balls and a strike to Jose Vizcaino. Mother and child painted by Pablo Picasso about 40 years ago. That's and I one. guess if Picasso were here tonight and he were a baseball fan out at the ballpark, he would probably paint Pear A. Infant with Felipe Alou and his son Moises, the subjects. Three and two now to Vizcaino. And there, there's, there's a, the Picasso Pear A. Infant, father and son. And what a nice thing on Felipe's... Uh, 60th birthday. Got to be very proud of Moisés Salou. He has become an outstanding player. It's amazing how much he looks like his father when he's at the plate. They hold the bat the same way. They actually swing about the same way. So the genes certainly coming through as Moisés Salou has become an outstanding major league ball player. Yeah, he is anything but an infant. <laughs> he's, he's a man. Man, yeah. And his pair is a man also. Still a full count to Jose Vizcaino. Ground ball is short. And another error on Will Cordero. You know, both of Cordero's errors, he's tried to one hand the ball. Yeah, the other one was a routine play. Here he looks like he's trying to rush the play a little bit. He one hands it, hits the heel of the glove. And the previous area made opened up the gates for the Mets to score two runs. Madero came into this game having made three errors, so he's made five errors already in this short season. Jeff Kent, the batter, as Vizcaino reaches on the error by Cordero, his second of the night. Jeff one for three. He did have a broken bat hit to right field his first time up. Good splitter from Facero. Can you imagine $12 million for the painting by Picasso? That's one you can at least tell what it is. <laughs> In other words, you there are some to, that you don't. No yeah, way. I'll be yet to use your imagination on a lot of that. <laughs> Picasso was a little too contemporary for you? He's a little heavy. <laughs> Splitter is low, one and one. As a matter of fact, at that same auction, uh, Sotheby's, uh, Picasso's 
I guess it would be Angel Fernandez de Soto, Angel Fernandez de Soto, was sold for $29 million. And 49 years ago, it sold for $22,000. 22, $22,000 to $29 million. <laughs> Ground ball, left side, and it scoots through. So Ken has a hit. Two on and nobody out. And Bobby Bonilla coming up, trying to get the Mets back into this. And Felipe Alou is going to come out, and I think he's going to make a double switch, possibly. Usually, when a manager goes right to the home plate umpire, it's a double switch. The pitcher is scheduled to hit fifth in the eighth inning. John McSherry checking his lineup card. Felipe Alou, yep, it is a double switch. Looks like Shane Andrews. Now, wait a minute. If it's a double switch, it would be a straight up deal because Cliff Floyd's coming into the game. Andrews is scheduled up second. Ferrero is out of there. So why would Alou be giving the sign that it's going to be a double switch when clearly it's a straight up deal? It has to be a straight yeah. up deal. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll figure all this out when we come back after this from your local Dodge dealer. Mets trail by five. New pitcher in the ball game for Montreal. Jeff Shaw, he comes in with a record of 0-1. He has no saves. Urban average is 6.10. He has worked 10 in the third innings, giving up 10 hits, striking out two and walking four. And Jeff Shaw, the new pitcher. Well, it's uh, very odd that uh, Cliff Floyd comes in the game and he hits sixth after Felipe Alou gave every indication that he was making a double switch doing the flip-flop to the first base umpire Ed Montague. Maybe uh, he doesn't know that that means flip-flop. But normally, uh, you see managers do that, and that means the, the pitcher will be hitting in the first baseman's hole. But, of course, that would have made no sense since the first baseman scheduled up second in the ninth inning. Here's Bonilla. He's two for three on the night. Foul back off Shaw. Nothing and one to Bobby Bonilla. The Mets trail by five with two on and none out here in the seventh. Splitter is outside, one and one. We mentioned earlier that Tim Spear and Jeff Shaw came to the Expos in the Mark Gardner trade. Gardner going to Kansas City along with Doug Piat. So the battery came from Kansas City as Bonilla fouls it back. So if you're going to order batteries, get it from Kansas City. That's the moral of that story. Joe Carey got the pitcher, or the pitching coach. Ball and two strikes to Jeff Shaw. the splitter two and two to Bonilla at least everything's up to date in Kansas City Edgardo Alfonso on deck it's up to date now uh, our Toyota American League scoreboard is one to one California at Kansas City. Got him with the splitter. So Bonilla down on strikes. 
First strikeout for Shaw. And Alfonso will sit, and Rico Bronia will be the batter. Star in last night's game, a game won by the Mets over the Atlanta Braves. So Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach, will go out and talk to Jeff Shaw about how to work Rico Bronia. Tim Scott, the right-hander, continues to warm for the Expos. Eight to three, Montreal on top. Pinch hitting for Eduardo Alfonso. Number 26. Bronia, number one in the National League in slugging percentage at 769. Just a marvelous game for Rico last night. He was three for four. Two runs scored, an RBI, and he made two brilliant defensive plays. Dallas Green hoping to get a long ball here to get his team back in the ball game. Mets trail by five. They have two on and one out here in the seventh. Wings at the splitter. Brunya in one pinch hitting attempt this year is 0 for 1. He has, however, hit in all of his nine starts. I have been trying for about a year to figure out who Rico Bronya reminds me of, and I think I've uh, decided. Fred Lynn. Good guess. Good, uh, good analogy. Lynn was straight up. Lynn may have uh, cocked his bat a little bit more toward the pitcher, but that is a similar batting stance. Good fastball from Shaw. One ball and two strikes to Bronia. He can emulate with Lynn. He's got a great career ahead of him. Yeah. Good short swing. One of the things when you look at Bronia, you say, why didn't he hit better in the minors? And you really have to ask that question because his swing is a very good swing, very compact. There's the splitter that gets Bronya. Two straight strikeouts for Jeff Shaw. Well, he goes after a pitch in the dirt. Not quite in the dirt, but down low. It's a split finger fastball. and. It was out of the strike zone. Check uh, Rico's minor league average. He had 21 home runs in 1990, 13 home runs in 1991, 10 in 92, and 12 last year in Norfolk. But he has really developed here in the big leagues, never hitting over 300 in the minors. David Segui, the batter now. And another fine play by Tim Spear, the catcher. Boy, he has been all over like Mike Richter tonight. Well, as you pointed out, Tim, he is quick. Watch how quickly he gets the body in front of that ball in the dirt. He uses that chest protector to block the ball and keep it right in front of him, and the runners have to hold. One ball and no strikes to David Segui. Still two on, but there are two outs now as Shaw has struck out two in a row. High with the fastball. Two and oh to Segui. Joe Orsalak has moved into the on-deck circle. And should Sagi get on, Joe will hit, pinch hit for Carl Everett. Outside corner to Sagi. 
Two balls and a strike to David. And Sagi fouls it back. So Shaw fell behind 2-0, and oh, and he has nipped the corner both times. And Sagi finds the count 2-2, two and two, so he can look for that splitter here. That's what he got, and he stays alive. Check swing, the ball hit the bat, and still two and two. Last year's National League Manager of the Year, Felipe Alou. He'll manage the All-Star Game this year in Dallas, Texas on July the 11th. Posing manager will be Buck Showalter of the Yankees. Best record in baseball last year, the Montreal Expos. And Sagi stays alive, still two and two to David Sagi. got him what a job by Jeff Shaw with two on and none out he comes in and strikes out the side still eight to three Montreal on our Honda line score and we'll return right after this message Clint's painting the town red in High Plains Drifter Saturday at 8 on UPN 9 Fans, start off your Memorial Day weekend at Shea Stadium with a spectacular Gucci family fireworks show. Friday, May 26th, after the 740 Mets-Giants game, will be the first of three fireworks nights at Shea this season. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. For ticket information or to charge seats by phone, call the Mets at 718-507-TIXX during business hours. A per-ticket surcharge applies. And don't forget to ask about Amazing May. Hey kids, nobody beats the Wiz and the Mets invite you to be a part of the Dynamite Dash on Saturday, May 13th, weather permitting. You can run the bases at Shea Stadium just like the major leaguers. So get ready for the Dynamite Dash following the Mets Expo game on May 13th. For ticket information or the charge seats by phone, call the Mets at 718-507-TIXX during business hours. A per ticket service charge applies. And don't forget to ask about Amazing May. Javi Bonilla has moved from first base to third base and staying in the game, Rico Bronya. Bronya, you may remember, struck out pinch hitting for Edgardo Alfonso. Brilliant job of pitching by Jeff Shaw, came in and struck out the side. Rondell White, the batter, and he takes a slider from Kevin Lohman, strike one. Strike two to White. Rondell looking for something other than the fastball on the outside. There's the splitter. That is low. One ball, two strikes to Rondell White. White was picked up in... The 1990 draft has compensation from the California Angels for signing Mark Langston. Fastball is up and in. 
I almost forget that Langston pits for the Montreal Expos. Going to Seattle in that trade were three pitchers, one of whom, Randy Johnson, the top strikeout pitcher in baseball last year, 306 of them. Full count to Rondell White. So Randy Johnson going to Seattle and probably the hardest throwing left hander in baseball. And Montreal with Randell White to show for it. Hit hard by the diving Bonilla. So Rondell White has his second double of the night. He has had a good night. He scored two runs and is two for three. Now batting. That's, that's what I was talking about earlier about how that ball just jumps off his bat. This is a pretty good example right here. He has that good compact swing. It's hard for him to get into the lineup. That's the thing that's interesting. Rondell from Gray, Georgia is going to be a good player, as is Cliff Floyd, the young first baseman. He hits one through the right side. White's going to try to score. The throw by Everett, cut off by Bronia, and the throw to second baseman Biscaino. They have Floyd hung up, and he's tagged out by Biscaino as White scores. It's 9 to 3 Montreal. So an RBI for Cliff Floyd, his first at bat of the night, and it's 9-3 Expos. Well, Everett makes a very good throw in. It was low enough to be cut off by Bronia. No chance to get White at home, and the cutoff turns the out right here as Vizcaino runs Floyd down. And Mike Lansing, who had the big blow in this ball game, a three-run homer, his last at bat, grounds to Jeff Kent for the second out here in the eighth inning. Lansing on an 0-2 pitch from Jason Hockamy made the score 7-3 to instead of 4-3. to If Hockamy gets him out, the Mets are still in it. But as it stands, it is 9-3 Montreal with Tim Spear, the catcher, coming up. He's one for three. He doubled his second time up. There was a time in baseball if a player hit an 0-2 pitch, no balls, two strike pitch, out of the ballpark, you would be fined or something severe would be done to you. In other words, they want that pitch to be a pitch that's a purpose pitch wasted to set up another pitch. Two and nothing to spear. Bobby Wine told me a story about Gene Mock with the expansion Expos in 69. They had so many 0-2 pitches hit that Mock decided to fine him $100 any time an 0-2 pitch was hit. It's two and one to spear. Well, all his pitchers started hitting batters. <laughs> so Mock had to call it off. They said, uh, you know, 100 bucks back in 69 for an expansion team was a lot of money. So there was no way they were going to have guys hit, so they just hit the other batter. So Mock called off that deal as Spear drives it deep to center, tracked down by Otero. The Expos score again. They lead it 9-3, to three, middle of the eighth. We're back after this from Roy Rogers. Nine three Expos here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tim McCarver along with Ralph Kiner. Happy you've joined us this evening. The Mets were leading three to two in the top of the sixth when Montreal exploded for five runs. They have tacked on one in the seventh, one in the eighth, and Carl Everett will lead it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And remember, it was Joe Orsalak who was on deck. He would have pinch hit for Everett. Had Sagi gotten on in the bottom of the seventh, but David struck out and Everett stayed in the game. So now he leads off the bottom of the eighth, but that's one of the things a manager has to do. There's Joe on deck again. But uh, now you let, you let Everett hit. Carl could have been yanked in the seventh had Sagi gotten on, and he hits one to the left side. Cordero throws it away. 
And Everett has an infield hit. Yeah, it has to be an infield hit. So the luck of the draw, huh? That was definitely the luck of the draw. Everett gets his base hit. For Darrell, who has made two errors in this ball game, with a bad throw here, but it stays in the ballpark. And it should be credited as an infield base hit. So you wonder if uh, Joe Orsalak's ever going to get to hit. Everett gets on. Orsalak was sent back to the dugout. <laughs> and Todd Hunley has been called upon to pinch hit for Kelly Stinnett. It is a base hit. Official score. Yeah, that had to be. Base hit. Orsalak back to the bench as they go to... Todd Hundley. Joe's had uh, two scares the last two innings. But now, now he gets back up again. So maybe the third time's a charm for Orsalak. He's going to get in this ball game, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mets trail by six. Cliff Floyd, of course, plays behind Carl Everett at first base. And Todd Hundley, the last time he pinch hit was against Montreal, and he had a grand slam homer. One for three as a pinch hitter with four runs batted in. And the splitter for a strike. Nothing and one to Todd Hundley. Instant replay. Another splitter, another strike. Nothing and two to Hunley. Everett looks like he's going to run at first base. Why not if they give it to you? Ground ball over the glove of Barry at third base. So Hunley singles. Try to give you a nobody beats the whiz game summary. The Expos with five runs in the sixth inning, not the seventh, the sixth. Mike Lansing, four RBIs, the big blow in this game, a three run homer by Lansing. Jeff Facero had a shaky start, but has recovered. Only two hits and no runs to his last 16 batters for the Mets. Some bright spots. Bobby Bonilla home run and a single. Couple of RBIs. But the Mets 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position this evening. And Joe Orsalak finally gets to the plate. He's 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter this year. Joe trying to pick up some slack, and that's his nickname, Slack. It's one ball and no strikes. To Orsalak, nine to three Expos, two on and nobody out here in the eight. 348 batting average so far this year with eight runs batted in. 23 at bats. Fastball for a strike. Orsalak turns around and says, John, that was not a strike. Marcelak, the type of player who rarely argues when he turns around, usually he's right. One of those, a grand slammer last year. This one hit foul, the splitter. So now Orsalak will go into his defensive mode like a castle with the moat around it. Mets do not have a better defensive hitter than Orsalak. With two strikes, he's the best they have. He really fights to get the bat on the ball. Holds up, two and two to Orsalak. Interesting thing watching Joe hit is the movement of his feet. He is a dancer in that batter's box, a little like Hal Morris of the Cincinnati Reds. Three. 
three and two. Right here, he fights off his inside fastball. He wasn't about to let that body get away from that position in the batter's box. Runners will not be running. Full count to Orsolak. Mets trail by six. Little looper left side. Cordero back. Can't get to it. Everett slots, slipped going around third. Otherwise, I think he had an idea about scoring. Actually, he should not really take a chance in no. this spot. No, you're right. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Three straight singles, but that's an idea of how Orsolak hits with two strikes. He somehow finds a way to do it. This is a fastball. Hits it right off the trademark. Bloops it in the left field. With no one out and the Mets trailing by six runs, Everett has an idea about scoring. He's held up at the last minute, and he falls down <laughs> trying to stop. And he gets back safely. But the Mets should not take a chance in that spot, and Mike Cubbage, the third base coach, stopped him there. How do you figure this game out? Jeff Shaw comes in with two on and nobody out in the seventh, strikes out the side. Here in the bottom of the eighth, he gives up three straight hits. The Mets had the bases loaded and nobody out, and we'll see how they do after this from Sunoco. Dim Scott, the new pitcher in the game with the Mets trailing by six. They have the bases loaded. Scott comes in with a record of no wins, no losses, and no saves. But he has pitched well. He's worked seven innings, given up only two hits while striking out six and walking just one. Tim Scott in relief of Jeff Shaw. A rejuvenated career for Tim Scott. Selected by the Dodgers in 1984. And then signed by the Padres as a six-year free agent. It seems like the Expos pick up a lot of guys like that. They picked up Facero like that. They traded for Jeff Shaw. And now Tim Scott was signed as a six-year free agent. He's only 28 years old. And Mel Rojas, the ace of the bullpen, is up and throwing for Montreal. The six-year minor league free agent uh, Scott was. He signed with San Diego. He came to Montreal in the Arky San Franco deal back in 93. As you look at Carl Everett at third base, Todd Hunley at second base, and Joe Orsolak at first. The Mets trail 9 to 3. Felipe Alou trying to get his outfielders in. They are much too deep for Ricky Otero, particularly his son Moises in right field. First pitch by Scott Otero is a strike. Nobody out. High ball one. One and one to Otero. Mets have had base runners all night. They've scored only three times. They've actually out hit Montreal. Tonight's been uh, like the football team that goes from 20 to, to the 20. The opposition's 20 but can't punch it in. And get it across. Inside ball two. Two and one now to Otero. This is a fastball right here in tight. Terrell moving away from the pitch the correct way. He had to turn around, spin around toward the backstop. Strike two to Otero, two and two to Ricky. Boy, those tack on runs in a blowout game often are the reason that you lose. Five and the six made it seven to three. And then one in the seventh, one in the eighth, made it nine to three. Bases are loaded, nobody out here in the eighth. Inside ball three, three and two. About those tack on runs, those insurance runs in the seventh and eighth inning, 
time run but be at the plate. Right. Full count to Otero. Base is loaded and nobody out. Ground ball up the middle. Cordero over to the second baseman. Lansing not in time at first as Everett scores. It's now a 9-4 Expo lead. Otero safe at first on the fielder's choice. His first RBI in his career. Well, the speed keeping the Expos from making the double play. The ball hit off the hands on the 3-2 pitch. Cordero shovels it off to Lansing. And Lansing's throw is not in time. At Cordero, you could see Cordero being much more deliberate down there, making sure of one, and with the six-run lead, that's what you have to do. Here's Vizcaino. Jose's been on base three times tonight, but two of those on errors by his counterpart, Will Cordero, and he fouls it back. Jose not hitting for a high average, but he has been productive with runners in scoring position. Still only one out. Runners at the corners. The Mets trail by five. Of course, I guess Salou figuring that Otero with 111 minor league stolen bases over three years, a threat to run. Floyd holding him on, but a big hole between first and second. Don't Outside understand. to Vizcaino, don't, one and one to Jose. Don't understand that because you want to take the uh, base hit away. And by playing behind the runner, you could give Otero second base. He's not going to be running here. If he got thrown out with the Mets trailing by five runs, it would be a terrible play. And he's a young player, and young players don't take the chances that older players take. So I concur that Floyd really should be behind Otero and protecting the hole with the Expos up by five, especially in the eighth inning. Absolutely. There's the hole Vizcaino has to shoot for. Splitter fouled away. It's one ball and two strikes to Vizcaino. Cincinnati's gone ahead of Atlanta in the top of the 11th inning, leading 5-4. to four. So Greg Maddox will get a no decision tonight. Cincinnati's won five in a row playing in Atlanta. Ground ball right side. Lansing throws back to Scott on a fine play by Tim Scott. Hunley scores. It's now 9-5 as Otero moves to second base. I thought uh, your prescience was going to prove valuable there, Ralph. It took a good play by the second baseman. If he'd have been playing off the bag, that's an easy play for the first baseman. I but think so. Good play by Lansing to get to that ball and a good play by the pitcher, Tim Scott, to cover. So they get the out. The Mets get another run, but they still trail by four. That was a very good play by both Lansing and Scott. And Jeff Kent, the batter, with Ricky Otero on at second base. Kent two for four on the night with a run scored, but he's 0 for 19 on the year with runners in scoring position. John Barry throws him out, so now Jeff is 0 for 20 in that situation. The Mets scored two, but remember they had the bases loaded and nobody out, so a good job by Tim Scott. After eight, it's nine to five, and we're back after this from Coca-Cola.
Joe Arcelak stays in the game. He'll be the right fielder as Carl Everett is out of there. Todd Hunley also remains in the game. And the new pitcher for the Mets, fourth pitcher of the night, Jerry DePoto. DePoto with a record of no wins and no losses. He also has no saves. His home run average 12.79. He's worked six in the third innings, giving up 13 hits. The opposition hitting 419 against him. So Jerry DePoto picked up from Cleveland in the offseason, a trade that sent Jeremy Burnitz to the Indians, will be the pitcher here in the ninth inning. Funny how uh, how teams get a six-run lead and uh, they go into a prevent defense similar to a football team that goes into a prevent defense. Expos uh, found two on and nobody out in the seventh inning. Jeff Shaw came in and struck out the side, and then the Mets had the bases loaded and nobody out in the eighth, and Tim Scott came in and retired three straight hitters, and in the process, the Mets scored twice. But it was truly the prevent defense of the Expos, and it's 9-5 to five, Montreal. And Tim Scott leads it off here in the ninth inning, and he fouls it back. <laughs> Nothing and two to Scott, and to Poto's 0 2 pitches outside and low. One and two to Scott. Full slate of games this weekend. As a matter of fact, it's an overlapping weekend that the Expos will stay at Shea. Then the Mets go on the road, three in Houston and three in Philadelphia. Scott is jammed. That is a jam job right there, one out here in the night. That thing was in the garage apartment. Well, that really got in on his pantry here the head of the bat goes farther than the ball head goes all the way out to the shortstop and he has the ball talk about Scott finding the handle of the ball he's saying look at this a big league bat well it's half a one it's the barrel not a bad deal business half anyway yeah John Barry, the batter, he's one for four on the night. He doubled and scored in the sixth. Slider tapped to short. Bonilla cuts in front. A Vizcaino and throws wildly. Well, we'll again, see how it scored. Again, the throwing of Bonilla gets him in trouble. But you have to give Bonilla credit for switching positions. It's so difficult to go from first base to third base. And he gets the ball perfectly but makes a wild throw no scoring on it yet Bobby has committed six errors by far the most on the Mets team as a matter of fact New York has 11 and more than half by Bonilla make that seven now on Bobby Bonilla Will Cordero the shortstop takes a slider low from Jerry DePoto and a miss one and one well you know realistically Ralph when you talk about Bobby Bonilla you talk about his offense he is not uh, paid for his defense and you try to put him in a position where he's going to hurt you the less defensively one ball and two strikes now common sense says that that position more than any other is left field so if the Mets decide to keep Alfonso I would think that Bronya will be the everyday first baseman. Alfonso will be at third, and Bonillo will be the left fielder. 
That, to me, makes more sense than any of the other combinations. Especially if Bronia continues to hit. He's shown no signs of letting up he has right done. now. So, I mean, right now, just from uh, the way the numbers are with the Mets, David Segui could be the odd man out. Two and two. That is unofficial. That's just kind of a, a you know, from the reasoning of the roster and the, the need and the desire for the Mets to keep Alfonso on the roster. Another piece of that puzzle, though, is right field because Carl Everett has not shown that he is a major league player yet. Well, you've got Orsalak, of course. Uh, he's more than the fourth outfielder for the Mets. And Joe could get in over 144 game schedule. He could get in 110 games this year. Playing everywhere. Swing and a miss. The throw to second. In time. What a play by Vizcaino on the short hop to tag Barry. Two outs. Make that three outs to strike him out, throw him out. Did the job. And a great play by Vizcaino. But the Mets still trail by four. And we'll be back after this from your local Honda dealer. Mets Baseball 95 has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. By your local Honda dealer. By Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's now and ask about our ultimate deep dish pizza specials. By your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer. See your Ford dealer. See for yourself. By Bell Atlantic, the Yellow Pages 9 out of 10 people use. The genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. And by Coca-Cola, always in the game, always Coca-Cola. Mets Baseball 95 finds the Mets trailing 9 to 5 here in the ninth inning. Bobby Bonilla leads it off. Bobby's had a good offensive night. He's two for four with a home run, his third of the season. And he takes strike one from Tim Scott. Splitter is low, one and one to Bonilla. Good fastball from Scott. One ball and two strikes to Bobby. And Cincinnati's defeated Atlanta five to four in extra innings. Breaking ball. He stayed alive. Fouling it off. Still one and two to Bonilla. Could this game stay the way it is, or unless the Mets catch the Expos with at least four here in the ninth, Jason Hockamy will lose his third game of the year, and Jeff Facero will win his fourth. And become the first pitcher in the National League to win four. High. Two and two to Bonilla. Fly ball, deep left field. Back is the left fielder, White and Bonilla. It's a home run, and that is a home run from both sides of the plate for the sixth time in his career. He hit the first one right-handed off Facero, and the second one left-handed off Scott. Nine to six, Montreal. Well, 
Bobby right here takes this fastball that's out over the plate down into the left field bullpen. Rico Bronya takes high ball one. So Bobby now with four home runs on the season. And the Mets have squandered a lot of base hits. They've out hit the Expos 13 to 10. They have stranded 10 on the night and Bronya fouls it off. One and one to Rico Bronya. Rico struck out in the seventh inning as a pinch hitter for Edgardo Alfonso. And Mel Rojas, should another Met get on, I would think Rojas will be in the game. Ball and two strikes now to Brunia. Like it was off the mask of John McSherry, the home plate umpire. Fastball at the letters and it catches McSherry flush on that mask. That's tough on the neck muscles. Tell me about it. Yeah. Breaking ball foul back, still one and two to Brunia. So Bobby Bonilla has homered from each side of the plate in tonight's game. The sixth time in his career that he's done it. He has now had multiple home run games 17 times in his career. Breaking ball. Two and two to Bronia. David Segui on deck. Bronya Jam bites it off. Still two and two to Rico Bronya. Ball left field playable Rondell White the left fielder. Ooh. Little Lottie down that catch. One out here in the ninth. Well our next game will be next Thursday. It'll be Jeff Bagwell and the Houston Astros. Last year's most valuable player was Jeff. We will be in Houston. Ralph Gary and I. First time visiting the Dome this year. Then the Mets fly to Philadelphia, and we'll have two of the three Philadelphia games next Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Here's David Segui. Outside, ball one. City of brotherly love, Philadelphia. And Segui fouls it off the other way. One and one to David Segui. David on the night, 0 for 2. He has struck out twice, sacrificed, and he had an RBI walking with the bases loaded in the first inning. That's got off to a fine start. It looked like it was going to be their ball game. Did he go? Yes, says third base umpire Greg Bonet. So a ball and two strikes to David Segui. No argument from David. Now, if you mentioned that if Jeff Facero won the game, he'd be the first four-game winner in the National League, and that is exactly right. Also, the major leagues. As a matter of fact, the three winners in the American League with three wins, Butcher, Kiefer, and Kevin Apier. Kiefer with Milwaukee, Butcher with California. Inside, two and two to Segui.
You can tell how hard Scott is throwing by the way the Mets are hitting the ball. Bonilla's home run was the other way. Bronya fouled a couple of balls off the other way and then flied out to left. And David Segui has been hitting balls out to the left side. So Scott has been throwing hard tonight. He's a big guy. Six, two and a half, 210 pounds. There's another one off on the, the other way. Yeah. Throwing the ball right by him. On deck batter is Bill Spires. Pitcher Jerry DePoto was inserted in the seventh hole. Ground ball up the middle. Lansing on a nice play. Throws out Sugi. Good play by Mike Lansing, the second baseman. And that'll bring up Bill Spires, the pinch hitter. Bill one for six as a pinch hitter this year. And he has only hit in that department. Bill formerly with the Milwaukee Brewers. And guess who is on the cover of the press guide for the Milwaukee Brewers this year? Bob Euchre. And Euchre, when questioned about it after 25 years with Milwaukee, this one fouled back. I don't think there will be a play. But my, Sean Barry makes the play. Sean Barry leaning on the top step and leaning into the dugout made the catch. Fine play by Barry to end the ball game as Spires pops out. Bob Euchre, when questioned about that, said, you know, that might be what, what's wrong with baseball, having me on the cover. What a play by Barry. It looks like Euchre would have made that play. <laughs> This is an outstanding play. The, the Mets lose nine to six, and we will return after this from Audi. Well, the Mets had the lead until the sixth inning tonight, and in the first inning, it didn't appear that the star of the game, the Budweiser star of the game, was going to be around to win it, but he was, and that's why Jeff Facero is our Bud star of the game. And fans, closed captioning of tonight's game has been sponsored by your Tri-State Toyota dealer. This is Rob Conner along with Tim McCarver saying so long and reminding you this has been a presentation of WWR-TV, UPN 9 Sports.